Hey, what's going on guys, Derek here. I've been getting a ton of comments from you guys to listen uh, to the new Taylor Swift song called You All Over Me featuring Maren Morris. And I thought I'd try and teach you guys how to play it on guitar too. I listened to like the first five seconds of it and it sounded pretty acoustic based. So I'm hoping it stays that way and I'll teach you guys how to play it on guitar too. So yeah, uh, excited for this project. I know that she's releasing these songs, you know, from the vault, so to speak, that I think from what I understand, I haven't looked a ton into it, so you guys have to let me know. These are songs that she wrote, you know, years ago, and now they were never cut or, or released on an album, and now she's releasing them as part of this project. So I think that's super cool. I'm really curious to see kind of, you know, the sound of the song and, uh, and see what it sounds like, you know? It doesn't sound like the old Fearless stuff. But yeah, so anyways, let's jump into the song. This is You All Over Me by Taylor Swift featuring Maren Morris. Sound like the old stuff. Find graffiti on the walls of all bathroom stalls. You know, you can scratch it right off. It's how it used to be. But like that dollar in your pocket, it's been spent and traded in. You can't change where it's been. Reminds me of me. So this is the chorus. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. It definitely sounds like her old stuff. And I'm a big fan of that. I personally, I really miss this kind of style from her. To me, this is like the Taylor Swift that I remember and the one that um, just made her who she is today. You know, she was one of the biggest stars in country music, the biggest star in country music and totally transformed that genre. And then obviously has moved over to the pop world. But the, the one thing that remains constant and the reason I think she is so, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, is able to transcend genres is because of her songwriting. And you can see that in this too. I know I always talk about this in my videos, guys, but you know, like the first line, once the last drop of rain has dried off the pavement, shouldn't I find a stain, but I never do. The way the tires turn stones on old country roads, they leave it muddy underneath reminds me of you. I mean, just the, that descriptiveness and the way that you can paint a picture in your head is classic Taylor. And you have internal rhyme there, uh, just really good rhyme overall. And then obviously uh, a lot of action. I think I've talked about this in other videos, but one thing she's really good at doing in her songwriting is using action versus like a lot of adjectives to describe things. She uses more verbs. To a listener, it's able, like I said, it's able to, to kind of paint that picture a little more and make you visualize that movie in your head of, of what's going on um, in the song. So I love it. I'm actually looking at this now too on Genius and it says it was once unreleased, leaked in 2017, written in 2008 for the sophomore album Fearless written by Scooter Caruso and Taylor Swift. So two writers on it, um, Taylor and, and Scooter, but it definitely definitely sounds like her old stuff. In terms of guitar, so the song is in the key of D. So if you wanna play it, you could play the song in the key of D with no capo, standard tuning. It's gonna be a little more difficult because you have to kind of make this stretched with your pinky finger. Um, on that walk down she does. So what I personally would do is I would capo on the second fret and I would assume that this is what she would do too because she really likes to play in the key of C. If you capo on the second fret, you can now play key of C chord shapes. So basically what the progression is, is you go C, you walk down to the C over B, you have an A minor, and then you have that F major. And I think that was the chord progression for the entire verse. And what I would do is if you kind of go back here, you can, like in the beginning. Yeah. 
Yeah. So what I would do to kind of get that sound, obviously this isn't acoustic, but the song recorded is uh, more acoustic based. What I would do is I would, um, I would do a picking pattern, something like this. So something like that. You also on the F could not pick that low E string and just kind of do something like that. But basically what I'm doing is on the C major, I'm picking the five and four, the fifth and fourth string. And then I'm strumming down, down up. So real slow. Then I go to that C over B and do the same thing. Go to the A minor and it's gonna be the same picking pattern in the right hand still. And this is where I switch to the F, this F major bar chord. And I pick six, four, down, down, up. Like I said, you could, instead of doing that bar chord, because that is tough for some people in that transition, it, it definitely is tougher. You could do this kind of F chord, which is what I often do, just for those quick transitions. And you could go five, four, down, down, up. So all together really slow, uh, that sounds something like this. Something like that um, for the verses, and then I think it changed a little bit in the chorus. So let's continue here. Yeah, I mean, the songwriting is ridiculous, as always. I still got you all over me. In the first verse, like I mentioned, you had that, that they leave it muddy. Underneath reminds me of you. So just <laughs> all of the, the imagery that she uses to bring you to the title of the song of you all over me just builds everything up into that chorus. So the, the chord progression, I think, for most of the chorus did change a little bit. She went from C major to A minor, so you didn't have that C over B in it. You went to the uh, the F major again, and then you had a G major as well in that in that chorus. So you went C major one, A minor minor sixth, F major major fourth, G is your major fifth. And I think the chord progression, or, or sorry, the uh, the strumming pattern is. Let me see real quick. Yeah, I mean, you could you could honestly do the same picking pattern as the verse. If you wanted to mix it up though, and make the chorus a little more dynamic and stand out, what you could do is just um, do some basic strumming. So like a down, down, up, I think. So like a down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down. Something like that for uh, the chorus, and it changed up a little bit at the end. Yeah, so that part, she goes to the A minor, to the F, and now I think they go back into that verse picking pattern in, in the walk down. Yeah, so it went A minor, F, G to end the end the chorus, and then you went back into that that picking pattern for the verse.
Yeah, so for that verse, chord progression and guitar wise, it'd be the same as the first verse. And you got burned, held out, and held on. God knows too long and wasted time. Lost tears, swore that I'd be pretty harmonious. Monica too. Yeah. I mean, what is there to say, guys? It sounds like a song that was written in the Fearless era, and personally, that's one of my favorite Taylor Swift albums. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't have much to say. I've said s all I can say about her songwriting genius, her, uh, you know, her just everything, songwriting, performing her as a musician, all of it. Uh, she is one of the best, if not one of the biggest pop stars in the world for a reason. Uh, and, and this song kind of just shows where it all started and goes back to those songwriting roots. I, it definitely has a more country feel to it, which I'm a, I'm a big fan of. And I don't know how many she, of these from the vault songs she plans on releasing, but I hope that this is not the only one. And I'm looking forward to listening to the really, really cool. So anyways, Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know if you have any questions or uh, if there's any other songs you think I should teach and react to in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.